we're we're on the radically opposite end of the spectrum to the black leather piss on your friends and <laughs> you know um, pass out in the in the bathroom after vomiting on someone for us punk is radical positivity kindness generally just trying to you know be a rad person and make the world a radder place Welcome to Zania for Games and Geekery, and I am here with Ben and Richard of Team Laserbeam. Hi. Hey, how are you guys doing? Very good. So you have a new game uh, that's out. Okay, cool. And I've got the game right here, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna press any key to start, and uh, let's see how this goes. Okay, uh, English. You sure? Um, I'm pretty sure. You know that uh, safe choice. Global hegemony, yeah. like kind of, <laughs> you know. Kind of does we support stuff. 11 languages, which is the first time we've ever localized. You can see, like, so this is the three of you. Yeah. And that's Richard, and that's you. Yes. And that's Jason? Correct. <laughs> what, why is Jason the ginger in this one? Uh, there's a lot of inconsistencies here, to be honest. Okay, cool, uh, cool, cool. cat's not actually that big. Okay. My, my cat's not that big. Richard doesn't have the asymmetrical haircut anymore. Oh, um, man, you need to keep a lot of consistency with the game. I don't actually program like that. <laughs> <laughs> What's the game called? And this is our split release, Teenage Blob. Awesome. Okay, so how did you uh, come to collaborate with the Super Weeks? Um, so we've been friends with the Super Weeks for a couple of years. I first met them playing in their basement in Philadelphia in 2010. And we just got along super well and stayed in contact over the years. Yeah, so they, they, they kind of just reached out to us. The one in the middle there is uh, called Mike Bell. And mm. I was initially talking to, to Mike about maybe doing an animated music video for him or something like that. And then we got into the idea of trying to do a game together and then it snowballed into doing a game with the Super Weeks and then doing like six games with the Super Weeks. So yeah, that's the concept. It's a split release between our band Team Laserbeam and their band, the Super Weeks. They okay. did six songs and we made six games. That's very rad. Um, so. I've always like kind of understood punk aesthetic to be you know black leather, uh, metal spikes, uh, like real fuck off vibe. But this <laughs> is like pastels and w what does punk mean to you guys? What's punk? So we're we're on the radically opposite end of the spectrum to the black leather, piss on your friends and <laughs> you know um, pass out in the in the bathroom after vomiting on someone. Like we're, we're on the other end of the spectrum to that. Like for us, punk is radical positivity, kindness, generally just trying to, you know, be a rad person and make the world a radder place. Okay. I think that's far more rebellious than just being like, fuck everything and fuck everyone. So it's defined by like the rebellion and, yeah. you, know, and you know. It's about, you know, I, for me, it, a lot of it's DIY and a lot of it's, um, you know, just kind of like bucking against the trend, you know, like jazz was punk, punk was punk, hip hop was punk. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like many the impetus names. for pushing popular culture forward, like even before it was called punk. So we've been making punk games together for six years now. And yeah, like our approach is basically to just try to be as like honest and handcrafted and real as possible. Mm -hmm. Where games tend often to go in the direction of being really clinical and very sterile and super polished. Okay, I'm going to go with some. So this is like our sixth game, I guess. And over the time, I feel like there's like a slow, there's like a world building and lore building up. I'm pretty sure across like all of the games, Ben used the word Bork instead mm -hmm. of like God or a religious deity. <laughs> so <laughs> Bork is kind of, I guess, the Bork. God of, of oh, the laser laser universe. Laser <laughs> universe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wait, is this me? Eh? That's I, you. That's me, the blob. Yeah. Doggo's on acid. <laughs> Yeah, so there's tons of little references Kayetana and stuff and... like scribbled into every corner of the game. Okay. Much. All very obscure. <laughs> um, and so there's the three of you in... Um, uh, how do you split the, the roles, you know? Are you all just a bit of everything or, you know? So our approach with Team Laserbeam is to see it as, as a band rather than like a studio or a... I don't know, how do normal games people see themselves? You know, like... Um, for us, it's like we've, it's very much sticking to the, the rock and roll band formula of like each person has their thing that they're really good at and enjoy, and mm -hmm. they stick to their instruments kind of. Um, but there is also like a fair amount of kind of crossover between us. But primarily, Rich does the programming and game feel. Um, I do writing and art, right. and Jason does music and sound. 
and level okay. design and level design and level design. I mean, Jay's kind of good at everything, so <laughs> he just comes in like and makes everything better. Why, why, why didn't people. you bring him with you? Because I would have just made, put us to shame. But the one thing he's not that 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 good at is having to talk in front of cameras. <laughs> Thankfully, true, there's too. one thing that he's not good at. <laughs> What am I missing here? What, this one? I'm gonna check all my. Oh, you got to You got to go through all your options. Ah. I do like that. I fell in love with the pants. Well, I think you the can, thing you is can still use them. You didn't look at your hat. Just gotta check out the other pants. Pants things. Oh, the pants. Oh, okay. You need to check out your hat options. Are there hat options? Oh, there's so many. Okay, I'm kind of in, okay. Hmm. Also, a strong. You're kind of going in the traditional punk look with that <laughs> one. I'm. I'm sorry. Like I've got like a lot of traditional uh, values um, going on. That's kind of like. My, is it my vibe? I don't know. Anymore. <laughs> like, so of course. Why did they make me play the game at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> um, in some ways, uh, so I was just trying to think, is that Pendleton Ward? Yeah. Who, yeah like, he, is that in, in some sense like a kind of like a punk aesthetic? I think so. You know? Very much. Yeah. yeah Definitely. With the, the midnight, um, midnight, midnight gospel, gospel and stuff. And even Adventure Time. The first time mm. I watched Adventure Time and I just saw Jake uh, talking to Finn and put his finger out to, to hush Finn with this tiny little hand. <laughs> I was just like, what? 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 And then the next thing, the dog was really small, and I was like, what? What? What is this? It's like that. That threw me for more of a spin than any extreme mm -hmm. hardcore other video I remember seeing at that time. This seems like also like like a very nice way of like community and connection in like making games that, that doesn't often like sit around. How do you nurture um, community? Uh, in creative collaboration? Well, I mean, I think, you know, since this is, I guess, a South African podcast, like Free Lives, the studio that made Broforce and Gorn and Genital Jousting and some other games have had like a huge, huge influence on the local scene. Like the local video game scene has been mm. bubbling along for like decades with, with Free Lives was like the first like mega financial success game. I guess, I guess uh, the QCF game Test of Dungeons was like, it won a IGF award, which is basically like the Sundance for video games, I mm -hmm. guess. It like won the top top category for that. So that was like a big moment for, I guess, South Africans to like see one of our games up there. And then I would say that probably led, paved the way for Free Lives and Broforce and Evan Greenwood, who, yeah, Broforce was like a smash hit. That was like one of the first real big breakout titles from South Africa. And it sort of created a platform for everyone else to gather around and pumped a lot of money into into the local scene and mm. we started doing game jams and no it's very interesting coming from like uh communities or like the music music community for example where you know at least in the underground there's there's no money going mm. at all you know everything is just super purely driven just by like enthusiasm and good vibes which go a long way but it is very cool in the case of something like a studio like Free Lives to see how much they can give back to the community mm. because of their success, um, and how much it also has allowed like connections with with the broader global community. Like there's people that, um, well, Justin, for example, Justin Maricani, mm -hmm. who did um, sometimes always monsters and always sometimes monsters. He's a Canadian developer, amazing, like really like proper like brilliant game designer. Um, who, via the connection with Free Lives, has come over here a bit, helped mm. us out a lot on Teenage Blob. It's just someone that's kind of been thrown into our orbit through having, you know, this larger beacon that kind of sucks, you know, kindred spirits towards it. I'm but, sorry, the game suddenly got hectic. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to be able to, to do anything except push buttons now. We'll yeah. just talk, don't worry. Yeah, you we guys, got this. you guys... Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> just, 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 bad. I know, I'm very bad at, at so games. Honest, it's a very weird type signature. It's like a it's like a weird art rock song. <laughs> so you really need to be able to hear the music. Just a, a moment, I was just like realizing we saying computer games is, is kind of like rarer and rarer, or saying video games is rarer and rarer. Now um, it's just games. And it's, it's become like the dominant the dominant game medium. But it is interesting. There's definitely been like a shift in that, right? Mm, mm. Where it's like a board game, except like I back in the day, that was a game, and then it's not video forget, games were cards. Let's not forget defined. TV games. Yeah, TV games. I love that one. <laughs> That's a very South African thing, though, right? Yeah, I, so. I don't know any. I don't think any like 
overseas people used to say, let's play some TV games. Yeah, let's go play, get my, get my TV games. TV okay, you're kind of right, you're kind of right. Yeah. Uh, oh, 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 it's still going. <laughs> oh, flip. Yeah, so this is very man. new for Team Laserbeam as well, doing something that's kind of uh, got some sort of challenge and skill to it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. Like our, our previous games were all like very intentionally designed to just be super accessible and focus on creating like a mood and atmosphere, mm. and, uh, like a memorable experience without relying on people's reflexes um, or motor skills. <laughs> um, and with Teenage Blob... Oh, but I'm getting it. Oh, you're you're no, getting it, I, yeah. I, I thought I was getting it, but I'm not. With okay. Teenage Blob, like the Super Weeks, when we had our first meeting with them, um, and we were trying to discuss what these games would be like. Um, Evan was like, yeah, just make it like Tony Hawk. Like you're just skating around and, you know, listening to the song in the background. And we're like, dude, <laughs> we do not make Tony Hawk. Uh, we do not make games where you skate around and jump. There's no jumping in our games, okay, Evan? And then like sort of went away and then afterwards spoke about it for a while. And I guess it was a bit of a process of the whole thing percolating and being like, Actually, it would be cool to do a game with a jump in it. Like, it would be cool <laughs> to do a game where you skate around. And so, so like, this was really very mm. much us moving out of our comfort zone and doing more arcade-based kind of experiences while still trying to maintain that balance of feeling super welcoming and easy for anyone to jump into. Mm -hmm. you know, I, this game feels like a fever dream to me. Like, the development of it, it's just, like, it's chaos. Like, especially <laughs> behind the scenes, just, like, the way all bits and pieces connect to each other. And it's all just kind of... Just duct tape on duct tape. Um, <laughs> duct tape all the way down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah and it all came together well. I'm proud of it. Why do you call me frog face? Yeah, I was like, you're about to find out. Everyone so. <laughs> I thought this was a game about love, and everyone's so, <laughs> so abusive to me. <laughs> it's a game about having fun. There you go. That's not so nice. Oh, okay. Okay, this is, this is going to be. This is going to be tough, I think. No, no, no. You're going to have a blast. Okay. Yeah, so... Oh, high-five people! Yes, skater on high-five people. Yes. So yeah, this is... this. What was the high-five button? Oh, oh, it's automatic. Nice! Oh, oh, I didn't get that... Fork. <laughs> <laughs> you can't yes, grind it! <laughs> it's very... It's, it's very uh, oh, oh, no, 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 I'm gonna miss it! Oh, I like that slow-mo motion where I was like... Uh, oh. oh, flip. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the feel on this oh. one of, of all the games was probably the one that I think Rich labored on the longest to get mm. the feel right in terms of how much does it slow down, like how much screen shake do we have, like, yeah, I mean, you know, all of the, you know, just, just, just that push off and like to accelerate yourself, like it's like a real process oh, of back and yeah. forth, getting that to just feel yeah, getting as that cool game as possible. Right. Mm. I feel like it's the first time we've really like polished a game in a sense that's like, we're based on user feedback, so mm. put something out, have it be bad, and just like tweak variables until it's better. Mm. That was a sick jump that I just did. That was very impressive. You should have got an achievement for that. Oh, man. Oh, I should have, I should have grind, grounded. Grinded? Grind that? Grind? I don't know. Ground? <laughs> ground? I should, should have, have grounded, grounded that. it? No, but you're grinding. I should have ground that? You grind the hot dog! Oh, the hot dog! Oh, eat, eat, eat the hot dog! Eat it! Just... Oh, how many hot dogs do I get? As many as you want. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's like one of those like joy joyful games where you don't. Okay, what's going on? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I sick flipped that. Very nice. Uh, I think it's worth pointing out that. Maybe not on this level, but most of the other levels have uh, Tim Rotten in the background. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, I see you called it like Cape, Cape Philadelphia. Cape Philadelphia, yeah. Cape Philadelphia. wanted to do a hybrid of Cape Town and Philadelphia. What's the next game? What's the next project? How, do you, how are you incubating it? Teenage Blob mm -hmm. is like a project that got blown out of all sensible proportion. <laughs> <laughs> quite completely. <laughs> it, it really just started out as like Rich and I going like, okay, we can definitely jam out a, a crappy game in a weekend, right? So six weekends and we'll be done with this thing. Like just dedicate one weekend to a track, string them all together and we'll be done. And that was in 2017, 
Mm. May 2017 was when, when we had our first jam to get started with stuff. And fast forward three plus years later and the game was still unreleased. Um, and that was a product of us just getting really excited about what we were doing and, and seeing the potential in, in it to, to not just be like something shitty that we just smashed out in a weekend. But yeah, it was also um, like tough along the way, you know, like there was lots of like lows. Mm. Um, definitely times where it felt like this thing was never going to get done mm. and it was like holding us back mm. and like we didn't know if we should just abandon it and move on um, or try to finish it that like, kind of mm. difficult position where you're like so far into a project and mm. you can't tell if it's going to destroy you. Um, yeah, and if it's, you've already thrown a bunch of effort into it and if it's worth putting more effort in or just cut your losses and get out. Mm. But we got it up to a point where around this time last year, we were getting ready to, to drop a demo version on itch.io, which is the site we've used to, to share all of our previous games. And uh, like literally the week before we were going to do that, we showed it off at a Cape Town Games community night. And uh, the response was very good from people. And mm. our, our friend Danny was like, don't, don't just like throw this away, like actually do sh take it to potential partners and shop it around and see if you can do more with it. Um, which was very encouraging, but then that called for a whole bunch more work to just get like pitch documents together. And mm. that forced us to really rethink about how we were presenting the game and the concept, which prior to then we'd, we'd not really, you know, thought about very hard. I feel like it's a pretty hard like decision it, in this era of things, mm. whether to like focus on getting like partnership publishing versus just making the thing better mm. and like hoping it does well organically because it takes yeah. so much time to like um, to like get things together to like pitch to someone that like you know you could have actually done so much work on the game in that time so you don't if it doesn't come together it's a gamble I guess mm -hmm. um, and it's hard to make that decision a lot of the time and actually don't know what the answer is half the time who is underappreciated who do you want to like direct some attention to um there's a game that came out recently called Sludge Life um, okay. by a Brazilian developer, Terry Valman and Dose One, I think American musician. Um, it's free on the Epic Game Store. So you just need to sign up to that and you can play Sludge Life and it rules. So that's okay. my vote. And there's a beautiful game that was just released today as well called Welcome to Elk, which is an amazing combination of being like very real and heart wrenching and very cute and colorful, which is always a good combo. Mm -hmm. Rich? Yeah, I don't know. Um, I feel like so much is underappreciated, and yet when I think about what I play and do, I feel like I'm just doing what's popular. Um, but our, we mentioned earlier our friend Justin, he made a game called Always Sometimes Monsters, which is this like bizarre masterpiece that's like basically an RPG with just like every possible action doable, mm -hmm. uh, explorable, except no one realizes it. <laughs> it's really good. Yeah. Like they also just did a game called Karen Simulator, which is a outrage sim, <laughs> which is also well worth checking out. Okay, an outrage sim. Yeah. <laughs> it was just the crux of the game. Which boots are you going to choose? It's like a, a big, big decision. moment. Uh, yeah, these are some tough choices. The, the, our booty, the booty boots The booty boots with butts option. on the, t on the yeah. toes is, is real I dope. the new shoes though. Eh? Mew shoes. Mew shoes are tiny cats. Mm, mm, mm. I see what you're going for, and mm. I like it. I don't think it's John's I kind like of thing, it. though. What are the Hoffmans? Uh, Why are they Hoffmans? The, like doc, Dr. Martins, except they're Dr. Hoffmans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, maybe, you maybe need the audio. <laughs> you need the audio <laughs> to make a bit more this. sense. Okay. It's a very uh, uh, psychedelic <laughs> audio escape. Yeah. <laughs> okay, combat babies, uh, old rocks. I'm going to go for the uh, booty boot. Booty Good booties. Call. Yes, call. very nice. Uh, yeah. Did you ever go through Sold. a goth phase, John? Hey? Eh? Did you ever go through a goth no, phase? No, I never went through a goth phase. Uh, I, I was always very like low Tweed, key. Tweed core. Low key, yeah. yeah. You would have made a good goth. Uh, I don't know. I just, I feel like, like I never have blacks that match. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like they always seem like they just clash. I'm I don't sure know. Is that even I'm possible? I'm sure that's a kind of goth. Okay. <laughs> Contrast goth. Clashing yeah. black goth. Yeah, I'll go for that, that kind of like dope goth. Um, I actually wanted to show you uh, photos of like our minis, like when you're talking about like the kind of handmade uh, stuff. So we're obviously doing an actual little um, D&D show as well. 
and we were like, oh, how are we going to make nice minis when we don't have any budget? Um, and it's paper mache. Ooh, so we're doing cool. like these kind of like janky paper mache things, just like trying to get like the characters across. Um, there's something beautiful about, uh, I, I like to think of it as like kind of blunt instruments, <laughs> you know? Yeah, like really. working with your hands, you like can't make things that are real fine or, yeah. or anything, you know? Yeah. Um, it's kind I of like authentic. You get a lot of personality yeah. out of it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Exactly. Misshapen Bob. I think even with like proper miniatures, if you look back at like older stuff from Mm. like the 80s and 90s, there's this sense that like someone sat there sculpting this thing Mm. where like now stuff is just like a 3D model scaled down, super detailed and super perfectly molded. But like it doesn't have that same sense of um, Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's kind of like the, the joy of old games as well, where it's like, you know, you need that ambiguity in this lump on him. It's like is this his chin? Is this another head? And like, you can like your imagination kind of fill in that space. Mm-hmm. It keeps the keeps the piece interesting for longer. Yeah, yeah. There is um, definitely like a trend in uh, I don't know if the word term is aesthetic appreciation, but like in appreciating things where we are like, if it is realist or then it is good. Um, that kind of like knocks away like the the the, the charm mm. of a. Yeah, that's yeah. been like a big thing with games that I, I'm happy to say I think we're coming out of. Um, like I think the success in the mainstream of a game like Fortnite, um, the success of Fortnite shows a shift towards stuff that's a bit more colorful and stylized. Where prior to that, it just felt like games were just pushing really hard towards realism. And mm-hmm. it's super lame for me because if I wanted to drive a photorealistic car, I would drive a normal car that happens every day. (laughs) I want to see games do something cool, like something that I can't experience and like really actually explore what the medium is potential, like the potential of the medium to give you new experiences. Yeah. So it's kind of like the the like gritty versus, um, I'm I'm trying to think of like the the more, well, punk, pop, punk, pop, pop, punk. (laughs) Pa, 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 and I was just like aspirating like all over the place. Pa, pa, pa. Um, yeah. Uh, where can people buy the game? Uh, where can people buy um, Teenage Blob? So people can get Teenage Blob on Steam um, if they just search Teenage Blob. Um, there's also a special edition for the game, which has a bunch of other cool unlocks and a zine. And then we have an ultimate edition, which is available on uh, a site called itch.io, itch.io. Um, and there you can pick up the game on vinyl if you're into that. And if you're really into it, you can get it on vinyl and hot sauce. Wait, how do you get the game on vinyl? Well, you get the split on vinyl, I guess. It looks like a video game, plays like a record, and you get the games as well. So it's like a duck. You, could, you could synchronize up your full experience of playing the game, playing the record, eating something with the hot sauce. Yeah, that's a good challenge. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's like something like wonderful about uh, materiality that maybe games are in some ways losing that you are totally. trying to get back. Totally. That's been yeah. something that we've been wanting to explore for a long time. It's like, I see it as kind of like a spell in a way as well. It's like you've got the, these different ingredients that mm-hmm. have to combine to create this experience. Um, so it's something we've been wanting to chase for a long time. And I guess with Super Friendship Arcade, there's already definitely a part of that with using custom controllers and stuff, you know, having this tactile experience that's specific to that moment. Um, so it's nice that with Teenage Blob, we finally made something that like, you know, you can sit and read the zine, wear the t-shirt, play the record, eat the hot sauce. <laughs> Just, okay, now you're becoming a lifestyle brand and I'm not down with that. So that's I draw a that, line. That's our dream. That, that literally is our dream. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, John. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll, okay. Maybe I'll live Team Laser Beam's dream. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna like try and get this last round down. Um, oh, you've got the gig now. It's a good. I got the gig now. I got the gig now. Okay. Whew. Okay, this is very dramatic. I need to bring up this music. I'm gonna pump it. Damn. Okay. Hello, friends. Damn those boots. Shoes. <laughs> Can I high five anyone? Oh, no. <laughs> Good idea, John. Fresh. <laughs> Need more high five in this game. This like this feels very inspired by like the local clubs. <laughs> I feel like I've been to these places. I've definitely seen these stickers somewhere. Whoa! How do I get naked? You went through the clothes check. <laughs> they didn't. Oh, they left me with my boots. 
Damn! I didn't realize there was going to be a nude mosh. What? Oh, oh, can I do a flip? Boom! Into the merch. Am I teeth? Oh. Yes. This is my new... new life. <laughs> I have become the turtle. <laughs> no, come back! My merch! Oh no. Oh no, I think I've lost it. Okay, but there's a ball here. <laughs> <laughs> ah. I love how games feature uh, bars that the bartender is ignoring everyone at the bar. <laughs> It's like autobiographical. Or yeah. fourth time I thought you guys went into like realism. I thought that's like what your what your vibe was was like not realism. Ah. It's hyper realism. <laughs> this guy looks like M with a mustache. Ah, I like that I can fly. Yeah. Whoa. It's one of those things where you kind of could spend more time on the controls, but this is good enough. <laughs> So what is that? That's a fumble core, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, just getting that like fumble core energy. Um, the joy of like, um, oh, I'm flapping my hands, my fingers to fly. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna get your your lifestyle brand shirt. Yeah, you actually shirt. have that shirt. Why aren't you wearing it? What? <laughs> Why aren't you wearing that actually? Where? <laughs> yeah. When? Now. Oh! <laughs> I told you, I'm yeah. not good at... You have to at, go now, this is the mosh pit. You go, to, go, go, go. Go to mosh, go to mosh. I love that I'm flying with my fingers. I, I think that's just for grabbing. Oh. Oh, I thought I was flying. I thought that was like the thing that like making me fly. You, you are flying, but you're flying with the... Oh, just know, with the power of music. or whatever. Boom! I like to think it's the boots. <laughs> Is that like person, multiple people, in one people? Boom, I'm here. Yeah. yeah. Give me the give me the drumstick. Give me the drumsticks. Guy. Oh, I've changed it to the MS. <laughs> Star War. <laughs> oh, balloons. This is very very dope. Okay. <laughs> so I have to. Ooh. Uh, all right. Um, cool. That was uh, Team Laser Laser Bean, uh, Ben and Rich. Um, where can they find you online? Um, I'm at Necropants on Twitter. That's A N E K R O P A N T S. <laughs> Spelling is punk. Twitter T W I T T E R. <laughs> Hi, Ben. <laughs> and I'm Ben Rausch, B-N-R-A-U-S-C-H. And people can otherwise just find Team Laserbeam on Twitter. And if they're really into hanging out with us, they can join us on Discord as well. Awesome. And we are Zania for Games and Geekery. Uh, this has been an awesome um, session. Thanks Pleasure for to us. chat to you guys. This was super cool. We can't do that. Oh, oh, oh I'm so sorry. One of these. <laughs> yeah, OK, cool, cool. Uh,